All right, everybody, this is Ross. I have the, the fig video of all fig videos for you guys out there. What you're looking at here is my, uh, my blog, figboss.com. And I recently created a nice little blog post. It's called the 15 steps to success, a fig checklist. And if I click on this little blog post, uh, this is uh, 15 steps in here that you guys can follow along with at any point of the season. Exact instructions of what you guys need to do to be successful with your fig trees. And I would like to expand on this blog post in this video and uh, show you guys some things and why I do them here and I, that you should be doing them in your climate as well. Number one is all about the the light penetration into the canopy of the tree. Because if we don't have enough light penetration, guys, into our canopy, we just will not form the fruit buds. Um, anything that's lower growth, that's really shaded, or growth that's in the center of our trees that's also quite shaded, you just won't see fruit on those. So it can happen quite often that, <clears throat> especially in the beginning of our seasons, where we talk about thinning, and thinning is a really nice technique that will ensure yourself some really good production. It's not necessarily about how much sunlight your tree has, right? It's not like, oh, you need eight hours of light, you need 10 hours of light, you need six hours of light. It's about getting the right amount of light into the center of the tree. So for me, with a, with a potted tree like this, I like to train them as a tree form. We have a single stem trunk that comes up branches out into some scaffolds, usually three to four scaffolds. And then on those three to four scaffolds, we have our fruiting wood. And that's what we thin out every year. So in the beginning of the season, to allow my tree to have the right light penetration into the canopy, I actually rub off a lot of buds. I break off the buds, because the fig tree loves to put out a lot of growth points, a lot of shoots, and by limiting the number of shoots, we're getting better light penetration into our trees, therefore getting the right fruit set. Number two is about our soil. And I've talked a ton with you guys about the soil. It really just has to be well draining. Um, and ideally your soil moisture should be consistently moist. So if you guys have a drier soil, that's okay too because figs can tolerate drier soils, but if you want the most optimum fruit quality, you want to have something that is consistently moist or slightly less than moist. So there's wet, which is we just watered our trees, it's saturated, and then there's dry, our trees desperately need water, and there's something in between called moist. So if we want to have a consistently moist soil, the best way to achieve that is to actually have a well-draining soil. Figs do not like wet feet. They have more roots that are prone, uh, prone to, uh, to root rot. So if we are really paying attention to the soil, we almost completely eliminate any problems with root rot and uh, having less air in our soil. We wanna have more air and the right amount of moisture. So that's really, really key. Number three, we want to do some applications of fertilizer. And I've touched a lot on fertilizer in the past. Um, we did a video that got a lot of hits earlier this year. It's uh, really only a couple months ago because I do my feedings every spring, the beginning of the season, right? I like to do my feedings from May till about June. That's when my trees start to actively grow. And I like to give them something like a 10, 4, 12. And I like to give them about four to six applications if you go to the blog post, I talk about covering your micronutrients. I talk about using some other uh, more important micronutrients like calcium and magnesium. Those are two really important micronutrients, as well as a, a trace element called silica. And silica is a really big one. I like to use a product called Dynagro Protect, which actually I use on a lot of my vegetables. Um, it really helps the immune systems of your trees um, lets them adapt better to stress, all different kinds of things. We'll get into a little bit more about the silica in just a minute. Number four, 
is we want to remove any unnecessary weeds or competition. Um, I am sort of guilty of this myself this year and that I have not been doing as much weeding on top of these pots or even in the ground as I probably should. And that's just common sense, right? We don't want to have weeds that are going to be competing for nutrients with our trees, also potentially competing with water. A big thing that people don't necessarily uh, recommend that often is actually the sucker. So a sucker is a root sucker that comes from the roots. Uh, you could call, I guess, a sucker one of these branches, but uh, a sucker is basically the same thing as these branches up higher, but it's coming from below the soil. And those, of course, steal away nutrients from the branches that are going to fruit, also creating some shading within your tree. So not necessarily the best thing. You may want to keep them if you're going to do some air layering, but suckers, uh, for the most part, just do not fruit. They don't have the right hormonal balance, it seems, for whatever reason, and they don't fruit. Uh, number five, this is a, a pretty good one that I like to recommend, is keeping winter pruning to a minimum. Uh, winter pruning, as we do every year, it should be annual, by the way, guys. If we're gonna do our annual winter pruning, we need to realize that if we do any winter pruning when the tree is dormant, it only encourages the tree to grow the following year. If we do some summer pruning, that actually across, a, across the board on a lot of fruit trees here, guys, it actually encourages the, the fruit trees to flower and put out fruits. So with apples and pears and stone fruits, you may see more fruit buds, you may see some fruiting spurs. With the fig, we do our summer pruning in the form of pinching. And pinching actually induces the fruits, it causes the tree to flower, which is what a fig is, it's an inverted flower. So I like to recommend just keeping the winter pruning to a minimum because I'd rather have less growth and more fruit. Of course, you need a certain amount of growth to get the fruit. Uh, but really, if you prune specific varieties, and it depends on what variety you guys are growing, if you have something that doesn't really like to be pruned all that much, uh, it could be a bad thing for you guys. So just in general, there are some varieties that don't mind being pruned as more than, more than others. But as a general statement for success, I think I recommend that you guys keep the winter pruning to a minimum. And with a lot of these trees, it's more about shaping, um, getting more light into the canopy, removing the crisscrossing branches, the dead, diseased, and damaged wood. Um, and then also getting our form established, right? You got to get that form established first and foremost. Once you get the form established, it's more about the light penetration and actually really keeping the winter pruning to no more than about four inches of growth. In fact, I only really like to remove the tips. Uh, and that's a big recommendation by a grower named Montserrat Ponds. Number six, I always talk about this. Ripen the fruits at the height of your season. What is the height of your season, guys? Well, that's usually the driest and the warmest time of your year. For me, that's right about now. Uh, we've had a hurricane that came through, but we want to be ripening our fruits around 90 to 95 degree weather. If things are getting a bit warmer than that, that's not more ideal. If things are in the 80s, it's okay. But once things drop below the 80s, it starts to get a little too cold. The sugars don't develop nearly as well. Um, and then also, if we have a lot of moisture, these fruits necessarily don't produce the best quality fruit. So I would highly recommend that if you guys are struggling with fruit quality and you want the best quality fruits, try to force your fruit into, or your force your tree into fruiting at the right time of the year. How do we achieve that? Through pinching. Pinching really can get our trees, if we pinch, it forces our trees to fruit about 70 to 90. Some varieties may take a little bit longer, but 70 to 90 days after you do some pinching. So if you think about in your mind, I have, uh, let's say it's May 1st, fast forward 90 days later, we're then looking at um, you know, a good time of the year, at least for me, to be ripening in that weather that's then warm and also dry. So think about that for yourself as well. All right, number seven, harvest when the fig's neck is soft. So this is a big one that people mess up all the time. I have some ripe figs back here. And the way that I check to see if they're right 
is I come in here and I check the neck. And if the neck is soft, and there's a nice little pliability to the neck, I'm not talking necessarily about the, uh, the stem here, because that's what the stem is. I'm talking about the neck, which is right below the stem. And at the bottom is the, the eye of the fig. And then I guess you could call this middle part <laughs> the body or whatever you guys want to call it. But the fig ripens from the bottom up. So if you are making sure that the neck is soft, the neck is ripe, then the rest of the fig is also ripe. All right here. What is number eight? We have to choose the right variety for our climate. I've said this so many times. That's why we grow many, many different varieties here in my yard, is that we need to have the right variety. Genetics are everything. Certain varieties will perform in lower, better, will perform better in lower light conditions. Some varieties will perform better in drier weather. Some varieties will like being caprified more than others. Some varieties uh, don't mind the humidity nearly as much and can handle rain. Some varieties produce larger figs. Some varieties produce smaller figs. Some uh, ripen at different times in the year. And some just overall taste flat out better. So depending on what you guys want, it's really important to choose the right genetics. Uh, three varieties that I highly recommend is Hardy Chicago, Violette uh, Violet de Bordeaux, and also Celeste. You can't really go wrong with those three in any, any place in the world. All right, number nine. We have to raise the soil temperatures early in the spring because the most ideal soil temperature for these trees is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And that soil temperature, just like us as humans, right, we have to perform, we perform better at a certain temperature. If our temperature goes out of whack, we get a fever, right? Uh, so we need to always be in that right temperature. It's the same thing for these plants in that they like to perform and they will perform better at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not the air temperature, it's the soil temperature. So if you guys are paying attention really well to the soil, early in the season it's going to greatly pay off because early in the season you're not going to necessarily have many 80 degree days or 90 degree days so it's better to focus on warming up that soil temperature to get these trees metabolically active quicker if we get them off to a better head start of the season we then just have a better fig year in general across the board so um Ways that we can do that. Well, we have them here on the patio. We have nice um, stones and the, these patio pavers warming up the trees, right? The sunlight hits the, the pavers, it warms them up. That's a form of thermal mass. We also have lots of concrete. The house is over here. We've got a southern exposure, so we've got as much sunlight as possible hitting the sides of the pot. Also, the sides of the pot, if you want more heat, you should go with a pot that is darker colored rather than something that's lighter in color. And I'm trying to move away, believe it or not, from these pots with, uh, with lighter colors to them. I do recommend something uh, black or a much darker color in a, a shorter season climate. And it's also possible on the same side, you could have temperatures that are too warm in the soil if temperatures are over 95 degrees in the soil, and you guys can get a, a soil thermometer very easily to check the temperature. If it's over 95, your tree's not really gonna like it all that much. So what I'd recommend is that you can actually get a lighter color pot. You could wrap tin foil around the pot, um, or if you're growing them in the ground, or even in a pot, it's very simple. Just get yourself some mulch. The mulch regulates the soil temperature. When it's warm, it lowers the soil temperature. When it's cold, it actually raises the soil temperature and acts as a form of insulation. So uh, really, really key there. And I highly recommend that you guys really pay attention to the soil temperature pretty much at all times of the year. Number 10 is something that I think you guys should do on an annual basis is probably spray them with some sort of dormant oil, a horticultural oil, uh, or neem, some kind of product like that. Because what we want to do is check for things like scale. We want to check for things like spider mites. Fungus gnats are a big issue. If you have an overly wet soil, 
especially if you're rooting them indoors, you're rooting cuttings. You also want to check for borers because they are a very soft wood that figs have. So if borers can really get into a lot of these fruit trees, if you have borers in your area, it might be a problem. Um, also, I would really recommend that if you guys are struggling with fruit flies, as I do, and most of you guys probably do in humid climates, the SWD, spotted wing drosophilia, uh, you can alleviate the numbers just a little bit if you don't really leave out fermenting foods. So if I have a fig here, and this guy's starting to ferment on the tree because it has been raining here, right? It actually did split a little bit on the bottom. We had a hurricane that came through, guys. And if this splits open, it can start to mold, but more importantly, it can start to ferment. That fermentation smell, these fruit flies can easily smell that, or I guess sense that. I don't know if they have noses, guys. But they will be more encouraged to come around your figs or your other fruits. So it's a big recommendation. If you're just growing fruit in general, guys, dispose and take care of the fruits. Don't let them fall in the ground. If they are destroyed, pick them up and get rid of them. Don't encourage the pest or the critter or the bird, whatever it is. Don't give them a, uh, an idea or, a, you know, don't give them a home in your yard, okay? So that's a really big one right there. Um, also a big recommendation here is if you guys are struggling with birds or critters, wrap them with organza bags. I use these organza bags every year. We have many videos on them. I don't have any out here for some reason but I usually wrap them with party favor bags and I have a link to those down in my Amazon storefront in the description of this video. Also, there's a one last thing I wanna mention about pests and critters. You may have a lot of ants, you may have slugs and the slugs and the ants, even wasps, by the way, love to penetrate and eat through the sides of the fig and that really destroys them. If you expose the, ex you expose the interior, excuse me guys, to the elements, you're then gonna have a higher in chances of mold. You're gonna have a higher chances of ferment fermentation. So you wanna avoid these ants and these slugs. Same thing with the, the spotted wing drosophilia and the fruit flies. You may have hornets, you may have wasps. If they're getting to your figs, you gotta take care of that issue right away. Don't you know, let them know that these, these things exist and they're as tasty as they are. Um, for the ants and the slugs, I use a product called Tanglefoot. It's very simple. We take some tin foil, we wrap that around the trunk of the tree, apply the Tanglefoot over top of the tin foil, and that does not allow any of the slugs or ants to crawl up and down uh, your tree. All right, so we talked a lot about pests and critters. Number 11, rejuvenation prune. And I talked about rejuvenation pruning a lot. We have separate videos on all these topics, by the way, guys. But this is a really good idea if your tree is really heavily infected with the fig mosaic virus. And I've talked a lot about this virus in the past. It's mostly a non-issue, but this is really what the virus here can look like. You can see a lot of spots, mol uh, molting of the leaves. Just, I, you know, overall, they're just not very healthy. And normally you'll see this at younger ages. You'll see this across the board on many trees. Almost every fig tree has this. There's no way to avoid it. The best way you can do this to avoid this disease and lessen the impact of the disease, because it does have an effect, is one, you can feed your trees well, which we do every year. And I highly recommend that you guys do, as I said, four to six times a year. But also we can do some rejuvenation pruning. And a lot of these younger trees here, I actually have cut them back to nothing. Um, we did it on our Col de Nom Blanc that's actually planted on the side of the house. We, uh, we cut them back to nothing to then encourage actually a sucker from the base, from the soil. Those soil suckers, guys, are way healthier. They're not gonna fruit for you, but they're way healthier. They almost completely shake the disease and they create a really nice healthy base for your tree. I highly, highly recommend that you guys check into rejuvenation pruning. It's a technique that I use on all my trees when they're young and it sets them up for a good life later on. That's behind you guys are my older trees. Number 12, I would definitely allow figs to go dormant when possible. Obviously, some of you may not live in a climate where that is possible and that's just something you gotta deal with. 
but allowing a fig tree to go dormant, that's a really beneficial biological process that occurs with a lot of these deciduous trees. So yeah, they don't need a whole lot of chill hours, if any, but I would not bring them inside. I would let them go dormant with the rest of your trees. I know a lot of you guys want to get that big head start to the season, but I'm telling you, let them go dormant. Let them get hit by a couple frosts in the fall or colder temperatures in the fall. They'll drop all their leaves, and then they'll have this really amazing surge of energy in the spring. And that just goes a huge, a long way to the overall health, the productivity. Uh, everything about your tree is just so much better with that. Number 13, this is for you guys out there with nematodes in your soil. Maybe you guys have sandier soils or you live down uh, further south. I would recommend you guys invest in a variety called LSU Purple. And I would plant LSU Purple down in the south and I would graft the variety that you want onto LSU Purple. LSU Purple is a root knot nematode resistant rootstock. There are other uh, varieties that you could try as well specifically the varieties with uh, palmata genes in them. So the ficus palmata hybrids between ficus palmata and ficus carica. Alma might be a good example of that. Uh, there's a number of different varieties. I have a huge video on that topic as well. Number 14, I would recommend picking up the falling leaves. If you guys have leaves that are falling on the ground, around this time of the year, it's, it's August now, a lot of you guys in the south, maybe even earlier than this, you're gonna struggle with something called rust. This happens a lot more frequently on trees that are younger. Trees that do not have the right amount of silica as rust is a disease, it's a fungus. So if you guys spray copper as an example, you may be able to ward off the disease, but for how long for you guys in the south, it's pretty unlikely, it's a lot of work. Plus you don't wanna be spraying copper all the time. Nobody does. So I recommend silica, as I mentioned. That will increase the natural immune system and natural disease resistance of the tree. You will not get nearly as much rust. I haven't seen rust in my yard in years. And I did a video on it describing rust and talking about it. And I couldn't even show you an example of it because I didn't have it in my yard. But I promise you, rust, uh, if you pick up the leaves, the leaves are causing the issue. So you need to get rid of those leaves, dispose of them. It's only making the issue worse. And also spray the healthy leaves with silica, the Dynagrow Protect, or use something in the soil that will act as a silica supplement. Um, many times throughout the year, you're gonna have to do this. So something like, um, you know, a diatomaceous earth as an example. And then I think we're on the last one here Number 15, this is all about lignification. And I've talked about lignification and why that's so important. For these very young trees here, these guys are growing and growing and growing. It's tough to slow them down. The way you can slow down a tree in terms of growth is really stopping the water. Cut the water out. You also can stop the fertilizer, the nitrogen, but really a lot of that's in the water. If you can slow down the water and keep things like I mentioned, slightly below moist, you will actually slow down the growth in these trees. If you slow down the growth, you get better lignification of your trees. They can then handle lower temperatures. You have a better quality of cutting if you guys are trading or selling. And then also, um, this is a really big tip for you guys that get really early hard frost, like I do around Thanksgiving every year. We see a very abrupt hard frost that comes in around Thanksgiving. It's usually around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, sometimes even lower. I've seen it down to like 14. Thanksgiving night a couple years ago was 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And if your trees are just not well lignified, 14 degrees Fahrenheit is gonna kill a lot of this growth. So big recommendation is around August, around now, you cut back the water, you cut back the fertilizer, and uh, you guys get good lignification. So I would highly recommend guys, check out that blog post that we just went over on our blog, figboss.com. Refer back to that blog post. You guys are ever lost, that's why it's there. I hope this helps. I hope to see everybody soon. 
hit that subscribe button for me and we will see everybody soon for more fig related videos. Take care guys.